There has been some new track modeling data for Hurricane Delta in the Gulf, and I would like to, in today's video, share this with you. It's relevant to a post that I made two days ago that some people have taken issue with. They thought I was making a prediction that this hurricane would hit Florida. It wasn't me making the prediction. It was based on something the Navy had done. They had changed the status of their condition of readiness to Core 4. Now, that's kind of a big deal, given that at the time, the hurricane was forecast to make landfall somewhere in Louisiana, which is hundreds and hundreds of miles away, even out of the wind field from NAS Pensacola. Now, real quick, here's the post that I was speaking of right here. And as you can see, October 6, NAS Pensacola, condition of readiness COR4 has been set for NAS Pensacola. Condition of readiness 4 is set when there is a potential for a tropical storm or hurricane in the Gulf Coast region. Please monitor NAS Pensacola social media and local news outlets for the latest development. Now, this is actually what this is based on right here. TC Condition 4. Destructive force winds are expected within 72 hours. This is why I did a video on it. Now, there is TC Condition 5, which is lower. It says seasonal COR set here during the hurricane season. Destructive force winds, 50 knots, 58 miles an hour, are expected within 96 hours. You see, this would have been the appropriate TC condition for where they were. Maybe 58 mile an hour winds, possibly, within four days. That was two days ago. But this is where they went to, TC4. So that's what I made the video about. That's what changed. Now, I just wanted to show the hurricane real quick so people can see the updated track on this. Now, it has traveled literally in a straight line from when it was south of Cuba over the Yucatan. They're saying that it's going to do almost now what would be a 90-degree bend and go straight north at the, from this point on and hit Louisiana. But, and that's what I brought this track up to show. This is from way back when it was a tropical storm, or pardon me, a depression, really. Way back here, it went here, and then virtually a straight line, really. And they're saying it's going to make some 90-degree turn. And here's the microwave data starting way back here. We can watch this all the way through. And as you can see, almost no deviation in course for this entire time. Now, I had mentioned something has changed. What has changed? Well, these are the new spaghetti models. Before, sorry about the camera noise. Before, they were all pretty much unanimous that it was going to go over Louisiana, but now we have three that have diverged. One says it's going to continue, actually two, pardon me, and go right over Galveston. One has it continuing over Texas, um, like Dallas region, and the other one has it turning somewhat northward. But there is another one now that has it literally doing nearly an about face and screaming back toward NAS Pensacola. And this is off of trackthetropics.com. So this is different from yesterday. So somebody somewhere was looking at probably the same model the Navy was looking at two days ago. And this is probably why they didn't just go from zero to condition five. They went from zero past condition five to condition four. That they were expecting it here in three days, two days ago. And let me go back to that real quick so that nobody's confused about what these conditions are. Condition five would be that you would be perhaps on the outskirts, the very edge of a large hurricane within four days. Condition four means that you're going to be getting hurricane level destructive force winds within three days. And then basically the same thing for three and two, it just drops the amount of time, two days, one day. TC1 means that you have an 
hurricane literally nearly on top of you, and it's going to be there within the day. So, and once again, the post that I was referring to, this is the Facebook page from NAS, the official NAS Pensacola Facebook page, 6 October at 636 in the morning. Condition of rain is 4 has been set for NAS Pensacola. So, just to be clear, I wasn't making things up. I wasn't predicting from just my own mind what might happen. I was going off of data that was gleaned from the Navy. So, still something to keep an eye on. Still definitely something to keep an eye on for the whole Gulf, all the way from Galveston, perhaps all the way as far east as Florida. Now, very likely, it's going to track, unfortunately, right over Lake Charles. Do keep Jennifer, Venever, pardon me, Jennifer, Veterans for Truth, Jennifer LaFontaine, in your prayers because they just got hit by Hurricane Laura and there's debris still on the ground in a lot of places and they're saying that could be turned into missiles and be a lot more dangerous. So, but like I said, the track has been virtually a straight line. So, you know, maybe it won't be Florida, maybe it won't be Louisiana, it could be Texas. It could be Texas. And once again, let me show you these models. They've changed. They have now diverged. Two say this way, one says, says that way. The vast majority do say Louisiana, but we've seen these things do strange turns and twists all over the place. There was one earlier this year that um, came ashore and then went off the East Coast and then reformed itself and became a hurricane again. So anyway, one final thing to talk about in the last few minutes here. Um, not super excited to hear this story. Soldiers won't have to pass Army Combat Fitness Test to graduate initial training. Now the reason I bring this up is because there's a piece of information that's missing. Which is really odd. And let me read this for you. Especially for a military. This is military.com. Um, usually they do a pretty good job of dotting all the I's, crossing the T's, but in this particular case, they uh, kind of blew it. The Army has suspended a rule requiring new enlisted soldiers and officers to pass the Army Combat Fitness Test to graduate initial military training through next year. Army officials announced in June that all active duty National Guard and Reserve units would be cleared to take a lightly modified ACFT on October 1, but their scores will be used for data collection only and not will count until 2022. Now, Real quick, they have changed the Army um, fitness test dramatically. There are all sorts of new events in it. Um, so there was a certain amount of break-in time for soldiers to learn how to do these events, literally learn how to do the event, and then train on the event so that they could do it well enough to pass. So it's not just push-ups, sit-ups, and running anymore. There's all sorts of different things. So there was that. But here's the problem. The Army Combat Fitness Test will no longer be used as a graduation requirement in initial military training. All soldiers are challenged to pass ACFT 2.0. However, no adverse administrative actions will be taken against a soldier for failing the ACFT, and scores or comments on performance will not be used administratively during the data collection time frame. After the ACFT's rollout in 2018, the service had planned for all soldiers to begin taking it to replace the Army APFT, the Basic Physical Fitness Test, of record in October 2020. New soldiers began taking the ACFT as a graduation requirement for initial military training in October of last year, but the COVID-19 outbreak forced Army leaders to pause all fitness testing in late March to prevent the spread of the virus, a move that also paused the ACFT graduation requirement for new soldiers. The pandemic also caused delays in fielding units with the special equipment needed to conduct the ACFT. So you have this thing where you've got to throw something over your head, um over a certain distance and a certain height. And um, it, here it is. It still consists of six events. Maximum deadlift, which means you've got a bar with weights, standing power throw, hand release push-ups, spring drag and carry, leg tuck, two-mile run. Um, very involved test. And that's why they've changed the uh, acronym from the APFT, Army Physical Fitness Test, to the ACFT, Army Combat Fitness Test. 
And now, I mean, you can substitute planking. Here's the thing that wasn't asked. Here's the piece of missing information. If it's a COVID-related thing, why is it just the Army? If it's a COVID-related thing, why is it just the Army? Because it's just as easy for Navy or Marine Corps or Air Force to contract the virus while attempting to assess someone's physical fitness, meaning counting push-ups, or I suppose you could do that from six feet away. It's just as easy to see a bad push-up from six feet away as it is from six inches away. I'm not understanding that. Um, now, the idea of the, like, for example, the deadlift, where clearly there's a bar or some type of weight you have to lift, you would have to sanitize then anything that was touched. So there might be that issue, and that might be a time issue, but why is uh, why are we not seeing this um, type of information come out of the Navy or the Marines or the Air Force? Why is it just the Army? So... Just a question that, uh, as a former Army guy myself, would like to know. Why do they have some uh, ability to assess the fitness and make it a requirement of their service of members, their trainees, but the Army doesn't have that ability? This is another Army story I found very curious. They're treating COVID-19 infections like combat casualties, meaning you're just out of the fight meaning you're just done. It's not like you get, like if you get the flu, that they, they don't treat the flu like a combat casualty. You know, there used to be years ago, guys, you know, come back from leave with different gifts that keep on giving from their, you know, extracurriculars, and I'll just leave that to your imagination. You know, that didn't take you off duty. You know, you were the butt of a lot of jokes, but there's all sorts of things you can get sick with in the military that don't, uh, uh, that are not elevated, I should say, to the uh, level of combat casualty. And I checked the Navy uh, part of military.com too, and I didn't see any information like this. They, uh, their physical fitness test is still much like what the Army's was years ago. Basically push-ups, sit-ups, two-mile run. Now I guess it's down to maybe a half-mile a run. Or pardon me, not half-mile. A mile and a half run. 1.5 miles. So... Anyway, um, just wanted to cover all of these topics because it was very strange to see the the storm track change now and have one of the tracks. Let me see if we find it again. Now, literally, one of the tracks go right over NAS Pensacola. So, and like I said, this this track, this was track the tropics. This wasn't there two days ago. This wasn't there one day ago. So maybe, just maybe, you know, there was something, some piece of information that wasn't being released, and that might have been something the Navy saw. So anyway, I guess I will just leave that there. But once again, pray for the folks in Louisiana. Pray for everyone, really, now in the, the line of the storm, because, you know, who knows? It could, like I said, track over Texas. And both could be wrong. So anyway, we'll leave it there. Like, share, subscribe. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.